Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I want to thank each of you for joining with us for our weekday Bible study. Amen. We have a powerful and wonderful lesson for today. Our lesson is coming from Luke 24, verses 44 to 53. And our lesson is repentance and remission be preached. Repentance and remission be preached. This lesson, we see how Jesus Christ is starting his disciples out after he have uh, been crucified and has been resurrected. He now starts his disciples out in moving forward. Amen. We go get ready and move into this great and powerful lesson, but first we're going to have prayer. Dear God in heaven, we do thank you. We thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us. We thank you that you are a wonderful and great God. We thank you that you are our all in all. We thank you that you make a way out of nowhere. We thank you that for leading and guiding us in your true path of righteousness, Father. We thank you for all that you have done, you is doing, and you shall do in each of our lives. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Heavenly Father. Lord, as we go into your word, Father, we pray that, that you would open our eyes that we see and our ears that we hear and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in your word, Father, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. We know that as we study your word, each person, one by one, can receive a revelation for themselves in your word. And as we were just studying about James um, last week, we can realize that as we look into this word, we look to see what it is. Is it something we need to do? Is it something we need to stop doing? Is it something we need to change? And Father, we ask that as we study and meditate on your word, that you give us the strength and the wisdom and knowledge and understanding to do what is called for from your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, our scriptures, we stated Luke 24, verse 44 to 53, and verse 44 to, and 45 says, Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Verse 46 and 47, then he said to them, thus it is written and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead. And the third day, on the third day, and the that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. As we look into this passage of scripture, we know that it begins with open understanding. The these verses. Uh, gives us a summary of the Savior's teachings between his resurrection and his ascension. This boils down to just the specifics of his resurrection and, the, and his ascension. Had he not told them that all was that all the Old Testament prophecies concerning him had to be fulfilled. They heard him, but you know many times we hear things, but we don't hear it. We, we, we say yes, we say okay, but we don't hear it. I said, taken together, they signify the entire Old Testament. What was the burden of the Old Testament prophecies concerning Christ? They were, number one, that he must suffer. Also seen in Psalms 22, 1 to 21 and Isaiah 53, 1 through 9. Number two, that he must rise again from the dead the third day, seen in Psalms 16 and 10, Jonah 1 and 17, and Hosea 6 and 2. And number three, that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Jesus opened their understanding to comprehend all these scriptures, in fact, 
This is a chapter, if you look at the entire chapter, full of open things, beginning with open tomb in verse 12, open home in verse 29, open eyes in verse 31, open scripture in verse 32, open lips in verse 35, open understanding in verse 45, and open heavens in verse 51. Verse 48 and 49 says, And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from Ohio. We know here that this is the time that Jesus is getting ready to ascend, and he's telling the disciples that he's going to send the Holy Spirit back, that which we have now. Amen. The disciples were witnesses of, of the resurrection, of his resurrection, and they must go forth as heralds of the glorious message, of the glorious news. But first, they must wait for the promise of the Father which was for the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, then they would be endured with divine power to bear witness to the risen Christ. The Holy Spirit was promised by the Father in, in such Old Testament passages as Isaiah 44 and 3, Ezekiel 36 and 27, and Joel 2 and 28. Verse 50 and 51 says, And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass, while he blessed them, that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. The ascension of Christ took place 40 days after his resurrection. He took his, his disciples as far as Bethany on the eastern side of the Mount of Olives, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While doing so, he was taken up into heaven. He was uh, 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 taken away from them. 52 and 53 says, And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. As we see here, that they worship him. They gave praise to him because he had returned. And now that he was going back to his father and said, he re they then returned to Jerusalem with great joy. For the next 10 days, they spent much time in the temple praising and blessing God, thanking him that for, for allowing him to come. Amen. Luke's gospel opened with devout believers at the temple praying for the long-expected Messiah. It closes at the same place with devout believers praising and blessing God for answered prayer and for accomplished redemption. It is a lovely climax to what Renan called the most beautiful book in the world. Amen. This is a wonderful and powerful lesson as we look back as Jesus uh, speaks his last time with his disciples and get ready to leave, but yet does not forget the promise that he sent back for each of us. We thank God for his ascension, that he could send back the Holy Spirit, that we might be indwelled with it. Amen. This is a great and powerful lesson. I pray you meditate on this lesson and have a wonderful and blessed day. God bless you. You are